Hey, what's up everyone? Mark Gross here. And today we're going to be going over how to open up when you're sprinting. I was going through Instagram today and really saw time after time athletes that were not able to open up, whether it was in football or in baseball or in overall track. And so I wanted to make a video today to really be able to focus and give you a clear understanding of what it means to be able to open up for one and also how to be able to open up. So as always, if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, go ahead and leave those down below. We're going to hop in the video right now. All right, so first thing I wanted to be able to do here is just show you the example that I think is going to be best for you to be able to implement the you know ability to maximize front side mechanics, which is really what happens when you're not able to open up is you're not maximizing your front side mechanics. And, and a lot of you guys are actually able to you know have a pretty efficient back side mechanics and how you're pushing off, but the issue is the timing of it and where the force is going. So when you're pushing off that back leg, you really want to be able to get that heel all the way up, have that toe range of motion to be able to be very vertical. So now as your, your front foot is going and touching the ground, your, your back leg ends up being really close to your body. So if you have your foot too far up or too far back, that's going to make it so now when your foot touches the ground, you're going to end up having to come a lot more straight down with your, your foot rather than going more horizontal or pull, pulling back with the foot. And so that ends up being a very big uh, difference between the ability to open up when you're sprinting in comparison to not being able to open up. So you can see as I'm, I'm touching the ground, that other leg is coming through. And as the knee's driving up, the foot is able to get out in front to now be able to extend as a pulling down, right? So this ends up being the critical part of the front side mechanics to be able to open up when you're sprinting. And I had this same issue that a lot of you guys had where I was just all back side mechanics, not very much front side mechanics. And from a timing perspective, you know, what it looks like is a lot of, you know, people are, are over 0.3, but let's say it's a 0.3 timing with your foot off the ground. That would mean that 0.1 of the time would be with your front side mechanics and 0.2 would be in back side mechanics, but they want to be reversed. You want to have 0.2 in front side mechanics and 0.1 in, in, in back side mechanics, and that's how you maximize your turnover. That's how you become a high level sprinter. You know, that's what like Tyson Gay has in, in, for instance, in terms of his ability to really turn over quickly. And so now I want to show you guys a comparison video of an athlete that came in you know, a few months ago and just his overall progression over the last few months, I uh, asked him to be able to do like a testimonial for me. And he was like, dude, just show your, show me when I was first starting off in comparison to where I am now. Right. And so we're going to look at him sprinting and you can see, you know, just not very much control, still pushing off with a good amount of extension out of the back leg. Right. But look at the difference in the posture, right. And how upright he is now and his ability to really push himself vertically in comparison horizontally where his foot's touching the ground going straight down in comparison to the foot coming down and pulling back right and this is the difference between running i think like 14 miles an hour in comparison to um over 18 like 18.6 or something like that miles an hour so really a big difference in overall performance right? Because he's able to understand how to open up. And this isn't something that happened overnight. This is something that over a period of time, developing the core, developing hamstring strength, developing the toe range of motion, the calf strength, all the things that come into it ended up showing itself in the ability to open up the sprinting by being able to dedicate themselves to the mechanics. And that's something that I'm really passionate about, guys, is that it's not about creating another fancy exercise to be able to help you in being able to improve your speed. I see it all the time. People are trying to, you know, get all fancy with it when really the, the sprint is a simple thing to be able to understand. You have to be able to identify the weakness within the sprint and then be able to train that effectively to be able to make this type of a change. So it's not about, you know, having a, a great uh, speed exercise or speed programming or working with any type of crazy coach even. It just is about being able to understand where are some of the issues in your sprinting mechanics and how to be able to make the changes to be able to maximize that. Now, you know, I do help you in being able to understand where is the big discrepancy between a Usain Bolt, Tyson Gay, um, you know, Asafa Powell, whoever ends up being your body type 
and you trade Juan Bromel in comparison to, or John Ross even, in comparison to where you want to be. You know, so you want to be able to really isolate the start, you want to isolate the acceleration, and you want to be able to isolate the top end speed and understand how to utilize each one of those phases correctly. I want to say 90% of people that aren't able to get to like a sub four or five are just not optimizing that drive phase to allow them to get into the top end speed that their body is actually able to create. I have a, a big passion about, you know, you're, you have the right amount of strength, you have the right amount of power, you just don't know how to actually apply all that you have within your body to your top end speed or to your 40 or 60 or 100, whatever the case may be. So um, being able to understand your body mechanics and where some of the weaknesses are within your performance and then being able to apply it to your sprinting will be the most important thing to be able to help you run faster. So that made sense to you, check out the description down below, check out some of the programs. I'm really passionate about being able to help you understand this, give you a program to be able to actually help you through it. and. I, I'm also giving you a risk-free option here, right? So if you go through it and for whatever reason, you're like, hey, this is not for me, 100% money back guaranteed, so you're not taking any risk. If, if you, this doesn't work, then I'll give you your money back. But for the vast majority of you that are watching, it's going to work. You just got to take the action. I can understand where there's some, there could be some degree of difficulty in it, right? You might be a little bit feeling like, oh man, this is, you know, could be a lot of money for you. I don't want to take this risk. Take a risk. A lot of you don't even take one risk. Take a risk on this. I'm going to give you your money back if it doesn't work. I really hope that you decide to do it. If this ends up being a, a video that connects with you, talk to you guys soon. And thanks for watching.